Welcome to What's New with Career Force for May 2023. Career Force is our one unified network of private, public, and nonprofit partners throughout Minnesota committed to helping job seekers, individuals, and employers. So glad to have all of you on the session today. A um, lot of things happening around the, the state. Uh, Lena, if you want to go to the next slide. We're going to get announcements from Mike Lang, who's our uh, interim director of Career Force Division. He's got a, a whole lineup of things to update us with. We're going to talk about the follow your heart to a caring career. Uh, May is tech month. Find out a little bit more about that. Have a discussion about creating on-brand and inclusive materials for Career Force. And a lot of updates have been happening on CareerForce MN, some new tools, some resources, some URL uh, updates. Um, we'll have a little bit about employer services. We have a really fantastic success story and a recap of yesterday's Veterans Career Fair, which was a super positive environment. I got to show up to that. So I'm going to hand it over to Mike Lang, our Interim Director of the Career Force Division. Thanks, Liz, and uh, thanks, everyone. It's, it's, uh, in case you missed it, uh, uh, Lori Janitopoulos has retired. Her last day was uh, April 11th. As a result, I am serving as your Interim Director of the Career Force Division here at DEED. Um, and we expect, uh, I know leadership is working to get a permanent director hired and in place in the next few months. And of course, you'll hear about it here uh, uh, once that information is up. But for the time being, you've got me to take you through some of the updates and information we have here in the Career Force system in the What's New with Career Force. And so I'd, uh, one thing I'd like to take a moment is just uh, welcome Giovanni Valise. Uh, Gio, if you could come on camera, we'll we'll have you just wave hello and say uh, uh, so everybody can get a chance to see you. Giovanni is going to be or is our uh, supervisor over the migrant and seasonal farm worker services, the uh, uh, <clears throat> agricultural outreach workers, as well as the foreign labor certification team, um, and as a dedicated supervisor over that team. He will uh, uh, lead that and, and will likely be in contact with uh, several of you who uh, work to deliver services to those populations as well as working on H2A jobs and other, other uh, situations like that. I'm also pleased to announce that Minnesota has been selected as one of the 15 states to participate in the first cohort of the United States Department of Labor's Job Quality Academy. Um, as you may have noticed, there was some information earlier uh, 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 this year, um, maybe even late last year, about uh, some guidance to states about <clears throat> how to uh, measure job quality. Uh, and this academy will be an opportunity for us to co collaborate with several partners around the state to develop our methods and metrics for uh, uh, encouraging quality jobs and, and promoting them, lifting them up and sharing them uh, with our seekers and, and, and highlighting our employers. And so we'll be, we'll have more for you on that as it develops as well. Um, but there's a link in the announce, to the announcement in chat. Um, later on, we'll have a recap on the 17th Annual Veterans Career Fair. Um, as Liz mentioned, we had an opportunity to join that event, um, and it was just a wonderful event. Uh, the veterans team, in, co in cooperation with the Deeds Communications team, does a wonderful job. Uh, Ray and Barry, Shannon, uh, Christine Pribernal, Laura Wingy, everybody who Put, you know, made sure that that event went as smoothly as it always does. It was, it was just an, an awesome opportunity, and I look forward to sharing more about that with you later on and during what's new with Career Force. But first, we'll have a quick legislative update for you all. Um, <clears throat> as you may be following or uh, uh, through email or other sources at the Capitol, at the Capitol, lawmakers have begun their final deliberations on Minnesota's budget, including the deed, deeds requests to bolster workforce development efforts in the state. On Wednesday, members of the House and Senate met in a conference committee to reconcile the differences between those bills and provide state funding for workforce development. 
Some of those proposals, among others that remain under deliberation, include the Drive for Five Workforce Fund, which will help prepare workers to enter five of the state's most critical occupation categories. They offer high growth and potential for career force and uh, career growth and family sustaining wages. Those are uh, those industries. Those those uh, the the five are technology, caring professions, education, manufacturing, and trades. There's also a, a, a wonderful proposal in there for helping young Minnesotans prepare for jobs. Uh, the governor and lieutenant governor recommended doubling the existing funding for youth at work, the Minnesota Youth Program, and the Youth Build programs, which will provide more training for workers who have faced barriers to employment due to historic systemic racism. Um, the budget proposal will invest more in culturally focused job training and, and employment services to prepare black and uh, and brown and indigenous and people of color for Minnesota, uh, color Minnesotans for jobs in high wage in demand fields. Um, there's also investments for supporting new Americans uh, through um, <clears throat> Minnesota's economy, which only works best when every Minnesotan can succeed. So this proposal in the governor's budget will create an office of new Americans to support immigrant and refugee integration, reduce barriers to employment, and improve connections between employers and job seekers. We're excited for the legislature to pass these and other important workforce development related investments, and we're excited, excited to partner with all of you as we put these programs to work for Minnesota. As a reminder, the reg regular Minnesota legislative session will end on May 22nd. Um, and as more of those details become available, again, we will have those for you here on future What's New with Career Force. Uh, uh, meetings as well as the weekly uh, updates that will come out uh, via the weekly career force updates that you receive via Gov delivery. So next I'd like to kick things off with an overview of the follow your heart to a caring career campaign or as we call it for short the caring career campaign. Um, it's focused on reaching out to people who could find their employment fit in uh, home or community or facility based care. All interested individuals are referred through Career Force. Um, so while this campaign is really meant to highlight those career opportunities for for everybody, the, uh, the the fact that this campaign is operated with Indeed allows us to really utilize this uh, this opportunity to promote our system. Um, and so a lot of the people will enter through the Career Force Information and Assistance Line, which is six five one two five nine seven five zero zero. That information will be in the final slide here as well. But this is a great opportunity to reach more new customers, customers who may not be familiar with our services. Um, but for more on this, I'm going to hand things over to Rita Beatty and Deed Communications to take us through some of the details. Hey, Rita. Great. Um, so, yeah, uh, just kind of a quick overview of the campaign. So it is called Follow Your Heart to a Caring Career. We call it Caring Career for short. Um, it's uh, a campaign with evergreen resources. So these are, and we'll get a little bit more into that in a few minutes here, but um, materials for use with uh, career explorers, job seekers, and employers. Um, we're kicking it off with a paid advertising campaign that was funded by DHS. Uh, the goal of this campaign is to hire, uh, attract, hire, and retain um, people who provide services in the home and then the community and in facilities. So we're working closely with um, uh, home, community, and facility-based care providers who provide uh, support and care to people with disabilities and elders in Minnesota. So, you know, uh, you might be working with people who think, oh, at first glance, this isn't a good fit for me, but it can be a good fit for someone who has a high school diploma or equivalent, um, someone who's learning English, someone who needs a job with flexible hours. Um, there are quite a few opportunities to start in these um, in these positions with a high school diploma or equivalent and then employer provided training. So. Um, and of course, the biggest uh, qualification would be someone who wants to make a difference in the life of others. Um, there are a variety of positions, as I mentioned, um, you know, home, community, and facility-based, so individual home or group home, uh, day program, job supports out in the community, uh, assisted living, nursing home, or other residential care facilities. Um, and you can go on to the next slide. So just a little bit more about um, 
the audiences that we're focusing on for this campaign. So it's people who need work now, um, uh, immigrants, refugees, and evacuees, so new Americans, students, college and high school age, uh, 16 plus. Um, and I just put the link to a lot of this content. Most of it is already live uh, there in the chat. Um, people who retired from another career and are looking to return uh, perhaps part-time with a flexible schedule and anyone who wants to make a difference in the lives of others. You can go to the next slide. So a little bit more about the paid advertising campaign. So the campaign uh, is funded by DHS. We have $150,000 for paid advertising from June through August. Uh, we're focusing on Google search, Google display, Facebook, Instagram, and ethnic media. Um, we'll also be doing during the same time uh, to reinforce those paid efforts and to build on them. Uh, earned media outreach, so that's to news media. And of course, you are most uh, welcome to reach out to your local media if you have relationships with them. Um, and you can contact me for assistance if you'd like. Um, organic social. So we'll be doing a lot of posts on social media and we're using the hashtag there on the screen. So partners, if you have your own social media uh, accounts, please use that hashtag so we can find your related posts and we can share them. Um, that hashtag is CaringCareerMN. Um, we'll also be doing statewide, not stateside, uh, gov delivery emails to job seekers and employers. And um, we're relying on communications via your networks, via industry association membership networks, and other means as well. And again, just reinforcing that point that Mike mentioned that career force is the funnel. That is where everyone who is engaged or intrigued by this campaign will go. They're either going to the website or they're, um, they'll be calling that career force information and assistance line and then um, referred out to local uh, locations that can help them. Um, so you can move to the next slide. All right, um, so resources. There are a number of resources. Uh, many of them, at least all the English ones, are already posted at that link that's in the chat at uh, careerforcemn.com slash caring career. So there's informational handouts about uh, the occupations that we're focusing on. And these, uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail in a few minutes on those. Um, we've also got a campaign overview and asks for your use with local employers. So those would be home, community, and facility-based employers. We have posters and flyers. We have social graphics and more. And it's all linked right there from that uh, Caring Career page. Um, can go to the next slide. Um, so here's a closer look at those uh, occupational handouts. So they all look, um, they are all in a uniform style. They all contain, um, and just some of the, the top ones, um, nursing assistant, personal care aid, direct support professional, um, and others. Uh, they're all already posted in English. Um, and they contain information about why would you like to work in this kind of uh, position? Who is this good for? So you like working with lots of people? Okay, you might like this. You like working one-on-one -on -one with someone? You might like this. Um, there's uh, basic educational requirements, any certification or licensing requirements, which in these cases there, there really are not. Um, there's information about needing a background study. So that's a background check. Um, wage range information, daily activities information, a QR code that links to a video so people can, you know, if they have the paper copy of the handout, they can snap that and watch a video about what people in those positions do. And then on the back side, there's also a fillable um, space for employers to use so they can customize those handouts and use them themselves. They could put their hiring contact information in there. They could put information in about an upcoming open house in there, whatever they feel like putting into that fillable, that fillable space. Um, so we've got the English ones posted and we're working on translations right now. We are working on translations into Amharic, Dari, Karen, uh, or Karen, depending on how you think it should be pronounced, I guess. Um, Oromo, Pashto, Somali, Spanish, and U uh, Ukrainian and Vietnamese. So those will all be posted on that uh, page, the slash caring career page on career force. Um, you can go to the next slide. 
So there are also uh, resources kind of organized in a different way and um, very, you know, some uh, staff and partner specific resources uh, in the for staff and partners section of careerforcemn.com. So of course you need to log in uh, using your CareerForce um, staff and partner account in order to access that information right at the top of the page so you cannot miss it. Um, there's a digital toolkit. They're kind of the handouts are organized into more of a toolkit there for your use. Um, there's a staff and partner fact sheet. There's a staff and partner FAQ. Um, lots of other information that would be helpful to you as staff and partners in serving um, people who are uh, engaged by this campaign. And I can go to the next slide. So the deed staff roles. So um, I work in deed communications. I've been coordinating, coordinating a lot of the communications with Laura Wingy and others. Um, also coordinating our communications with other agencies. So DHS, of course, because they are kindly funding the paid portion of the campaign. Uh, MDH, Min State Health Force, uh, plus industry associations. So we're working with um, uh, a variety of industry associations who uh, are, you know, represent employers who work in home, community, and facility-based care. So leading age care providers, several others, I can provide you the list if you want. And we're sharing information with those industry associations to share out to their members. So they have, um, as of last week, started sending out um, uh, article updates on this campaign. And one of the asks is asking those um, employers if they have positions that are open to contact their local career force location. Um, then you can go to the next slide. Um, oh, sorry, I guess I <laughs> kind of missed half of that. Um, so Liz Jennings is, uh, she's the events point person. She's doing, and she's also doing a lot of the employer outreach uh, support for lo uh, local locations who are wanting assistance. Shayla Drake, who's a workforce strategy consultant is uh, plugged in with the statewide healthcare employer group. Um, she is also doing employer uh, outreach. And then Heather Anderson from the Career Force Information and Assistance Line. Uh, she's the point person for services, um, you know, referrals and, and uh, assistance provided to those who call the 7500 number. Okay, now we can go to the next slide. Uh, timeline. Uh, next week, next Thursday, the 11th, uh, there's an employer information meeting. Um, I don't know exactly how many people are signed up now, but at last check, it was over 100. So these are employers who are wanting to find out more about this campaign and how they can become involved in it. Uh, in mid-May, mid all of those translated materials will, or by mid-May, all of those translated materials will be posted. Um, like I said, they are out for translation now. It just takes a little while. Um, June 1st, the paid digital search, uh, paid display, Google display as well, social media, and, and social media would be Facebook and Instagram, and then ethnic media ad campaign begins. And then August 31st, the paid uh, campaign ends, but the materials will live on and we will continue to update them as needed, updating wage information and information like that. Um, now you can go to the next slide. And uh, with that, I will hand things over to Liz for more on employer engagement and events. Thank you. Um, adding to that timeline to we are we plan to hold an update meeting for staff and partners sometime in June. We're just looking at the date. And so you'll have a chance to, we'll have a chance to talk about um, how it's going in the first few weeks of June. Um, May 11th, Shayla and I are co-hosting an employer meeting to get them engaged, get them excited let them know about all of the resources that we've created and start the planning process for what kind of events are going to happen in uh, their regions, your regions. I have heard from a couple of you looking for a list of employers in your local area. So one of the steps I'm going to take that after this meeting, um, I'm going to take that attendance list and then divide it up and connect everyone um, by their city to you at your local career force location. So connecting you deliberately so that you can continue talking and figuring out um, 
what you're going to do. I had one really good conversation with uh, a care provider employer yesterday, and she said at one point, um, one of her places that she had worked, they did a week of uh, open houses. You know, so is that one type of activity that could take place in your area where all of the care provider facilities um, could have a series of open houses, you know, for job seekers, for community members, for everyone, you know, for even resident families, um, you know, and just make it fun, make it festival, make it, uh, make it so that people open their eyes and see, yeah, this could be a fit for me. So you can find um, these resources. Please share the Caring Career Employer Resources URL with your local employers. Make sure that they know about it. You know, quite honestly, uh, we've already got 230 people who have completed the WebEx meeting link, and they're all care provider employers from across the state. That is absolutely fantastic. Um, so keep sharing it. Keep making sure that they know about it. Uh, go to the next slide, please. Thank you. On that Caring Career Employer Resources subpage, we've got a flyer that could be sent out to employers. You can see a screenshot of what it looks like. Lots of ideas of what they could be doing. Um, again, making sure that they connect with you in the location that you work in. Ask how you can be engaged in this Job Seeker Outreach campaign. Um, I'm available. I'm sure Shayla is available too. If you want ideas on setting up a meeting in your local area and planning some things. Uh, we also encourage the employers to utilize the occupational handouts in all of the languages. Uh, think about what kind of career exploration, hiring events, player of the day events, drop in interviews that you can hold, that they can hold. And also we're getting, going to include um, information on the, the hashtag, the caring career MN hashtag that, um, you know, if everyone uses, we'll really be able to have a groundswell of um, information across the entire state. So again, invite your employers to that in, info session. So um, again, this is just a little bit more on what I said. It's, it's kind of the, the fine print in that handout. But keep in touch and I'll, um, you know, we'll just coordinate be between all of you and the employers after the May 11th date. So next steps on the next slide. Continue posting. Um, we are going to continue posting materials that are useful to job seekers and the care provider employers. So keep an eye on that Caring Career homepage and all of the sublinks. Please send your event info both to me and to Rita so that we can post them on the Caring Career Events page. And then we will also keep promoting um, all of these events. I put the question in the chat. What would you like to see in the toolkits? That was on the other slide. Please send us your ideas. Either type, type it in the chat today or send that email to careerforce at state.mn or me and Rita. And then um, again, you know, different things that we'd already talked about. So thinking of a question or a comment later, again, send it to all of us and start using that Caring Career MN hashtag and let us know how else we can help. So thanks, it's gonna be good. I'm gonna turn it over back to Rita, who's going to give us information about May. Yep, and just, uh... Yeah, please do reach out with any questions about um, the Caring Career Campaign. Um, so May is Technology Month. This is one of those months that uh, DeedComs does uh, uh, does support. Um, we do some blog posts. We do graphics. Um, we 
share out your events. So if you have events related to tech hiring, information technology jobs, or information technology career exploration, we are sharing them out. Um, but it's not a month that Deedcoms is able to do like a full on campaign for. So not quite to the same level as Manufacturing Month or Follow Your Heart to a Caring Career campaign, for example. Um, but there are quite a few resources there. Uh, there's labor market information, so demand, um, uh, wage information, uh, blog posts, social graphics, events, all sorts of things already posted there. Uh, Ramsey County has a whole slate of events, and so we're sharing them on our events calendar as well. Um, and so we'll be posting, uh, we have one blog post posted, we'll be posting more and linking from that page as well. So um, information technology, uh, career exploration, and hiring event type of events. We're really looking for people to share those with us so we can get them posted on that page. Um, so you can go to the next slide. So now I would like to uh, introduce my colleagues in Deed Communications, Laura Winnie and Sam Clayton. Um, they're going to talk a little bit more about creating on-brand um, accessible and inclusive uh, materials, communications materials for use with your customers. Thanks, Rita. Hi everyone, I am Laura Wingy. I am Deed's um, creative director. Um, and I just wanted to um, kind of refresh everyone's memory on how we um, or why we um, created the Career Force brand. And the upcoming um, Caring Careers campaign is a prime example of this. Um, we will be spending significant dollars on Google paid ads, um, digital search, and, um, and like I said, this is the largest um, dollar influx that we have had for paid advertising. All of that advertising uses the CareerForce brand um, because we have to drive people to one place um, from all of those social media ads and, and digital ads and things like that. And so all of that Caring Careers content lives on CareerForce. Um, and so the, the benefit to you guys of that is when you are doing your materials and your branding, um, if you're not including the Career Force logo, then your customers will not associate you with that Caring Careers campaign. And so all that money that we are investing into advertising the workforce system um, will not benefit your area or your customers. And so um, it's just like Deed is part of Career Force. Um, these ads don't reference Deed, they will reference um, Career Force. And so it just really, um, in order, we, we, we hear, we continue to hear that nobody knows about us. Well, if we if we put money into advertising and um, across the state, job seekers do not see that career force brand in your region. They will not know that um, you guys are a resource for all of that caring careers materials. So um, again, we're we're looking to create one point of, of contact for our customers, one door that they can walk through to find all the information they need um, to, to find a great job in the state. And so um, just, uh, uh, you know, wanting to, to help you guys um, really benefit from the money that, and, and all the work, um, this, all of those materials um, that you saw have all been done by Rita. And so um, in order for you guys to benefit from that time and money and resources, um, we just, you know, want to make sure that you guys are putting career force on your materials as well. Um, if you have questions about how to do this um, or uh, how we incorporate, you know, your logo and the career force logo or any of those sorts of things, feel free to contact Rita um, or myself. Um, you could go to the next slide. 
So um, just a couple reminders of things that we have for you guys to try and make it easier for you um, to integrate the Career Force branding. We have um, on the staff and partners side um, of careerforcemn.com, all sorts of branded templates for you for flyers, PowerPoint presentations, um, uh, job fair handouts. Um, we tried to create, you know, templates that we heard from you guys that were needed. And these are Word, Word documents. You can easily pull the template, insert your text by following the template that we have created. Your materials will, will be accessible, um, which is also um, a super uh, important thing. By state and federal law, we are all required to make sure that our documents are accessible um, to anyone. And so um, my uh, staff person, Sam, is going to get into that portion of things a little bit more. Um, but I just was, wanted to also say um, from a, a template or handout standpoint, if you are consistently doing um, some sort of event or document and you're not finding a, ha a, a handout template that works for you, please feel free to contact me. Um, I, it, is, it is simple and easy for my staff to create a nice branded template for you, but then the benefit is the whole entire system can use it. So um, please don't hesitate to contact me if you see a need for another template that would be helpful for you in your jobs. And then I also will just indicate that, um, you know, sometimes a template isn't going to work. Um, maybe you've got um, a whole bunch of partners involved, or you know, maybe it's just a, a more complicated um, event. Um, do know that I am I am willing to help design documents for you with pl with plenty of lead time, and um, again, assuming that they are unique and special events, things that you can't do yourself in Word with one of the dozens of templates that we have already created for you. So if you find yourself in a situation going, boy, I tried to use the template and I just can't get this to look decent, Laura, can you help? Um, please, I am, I am happy to help. And, and one of the reasons for that is what we see a lot of times um, is when flyers are created by staff in the field, and if they are not using one of our Word templates, those documents are 100% inaccessible to any of our users. What those documents look like, if you make a PDF yourself and you don't understand accessibility and you don't have Adobe Pro, that document to somebody who uses assistive technology says image. It is one big picture and that is all that they hear and see. And so they are missing out on your information. Now, we all, I often hear, well, you know, I don't really have anybody who, who is, you know, uses a screen reader or things like that. The other thing that accessibility does for your documents is makes them actually findable on the website. If you create a PDF document and you post it on your local regional page and that PDF has not gone through the accessibility process, Google will not find one word of that PDF file. So if somebody knows that there is a Bemidji job fair and you have that information in a PDF flyer that you have made with, um, again, without knowing how to make accessible documents, Google is, is not gonna find it. Google can't read that PDF, just like somebody using a screen reader can't read that PDF. So while we talk about this from an accessibility standpoint, um, it, really, uh, it, it really matters in terms of Google and your customers being able to find that information. Um, most people aren't typing in a website address 
careerforcemn.com backslash veterans backslash veterans career fair, right? How do they find us? They go, oh, I heard about this on the radio. Let me Google veterans career fair. Well, if I had made all of those veterans career fair documents and posted them as PDF files that weren't accessible, those customers using Google would not have found one mention of our of our event yesterday. So that is a that is just like a high level overview of why, even though we say accessibility, we're we're talking about much more than just somebody who may be using assistive technology. Accessibility matters to Google. Um, almost more than um, some of the other, um, some of our other customers. So with that, again, if you have questions, if you want to, you know, brainstorm and, and talk through an upcoming um, event you might have and how we could help you promote it or, or um, you know, create some on-brand materials for you, happy to have those conversations um, with anybody in the workforce system. So um, with that, I think I am going to um, turn it over to my coworker. Oh, sorry. Here's a yes. Just here's a, a little bit more about what what you will find um, on that staff and partners area. So again, there's lots of templates there. Um, if you have a, a desire for a different template, please let us know, and um, we're continually adding to those um, to those uh, templates and options for you there. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Sam Clayton. I am DEED's uh, Digital Accessibility Coordinator. So what I do is I take all of those um, PDF documents, the flyers, PowerPoint presentations, all of those fun things um, are, you know, go through me and I check them for accessibility. Um, what that means is I check to make sure that the document is poor. And what I mean by that is it needs to be perceivable. So they need to understand that this is a flyer for a job fair or a career fair or something along that line. It needs to be operable. They need to be able to operate their technology to access your flyer. So if they're using a phone, if they're using Google, if they're using you know, whatever they're using, um, it needs to be operable. So they need to be able to also function in there. So if you have fillable fields for them to fill out for a registration, for example, they need to be able to access that and actually fill out the document. Um, it needs to be understandable. They need to understand, hey, this is a registration form. Hey, this is a career fair flyer. Hey, this is where we're going to be going. Um, and then it needs to be robust. And what that means is they need to be able to utilize and access the information that is available to them through their assistive technology. Now, assistive technology can be anything from, you know, a screen reader. Now, a lot of people think that the only, the only disability that would use a screen reader would be blind people, but that's not true. People with dyslexia, people with Parkinson's, people with reading disorders, people with traumatic brain injuries, these are all people that use screen readers simply because sometimes they can't take information in by reading it. They, they can only take it in audibly, especially if you have Parkinson's and your head's moving and you get motion sickness just looking at a screen. Um, so it's important that it is perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. So what makes a document accessible? Well, it has to have structure. So what that means is that Structure, so if you remember back to college or high school and you're coming up with your essays and your reports and you have, you have your outline. So you have your topic of your essay that you're writing, which is the title of your document in this instance. So career fair um, at, in Forest Lake, Minnesota. That's gonna be the topic. And then we have, that's your heading one. And then below that we have a heading level two, which is like, your, your intro, your body, and your closing, so your second level heading. In this instance, it's going to be time, location, and what are we doing? That would be your second heading level. A third is going to support all of that, and so it just kind of goes down, and so you have that structure, and with that structure comes the ability to 
search your document. And because those heading levels, like Laura was saying, if you have it accessible, those heading levels then become um, searchable through Google and all of these other things, which actually promotes your event in a way that we don't have to work to do that. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of lazy. I like other things doing my job for me when I can. So it works out well. Um, your images and your graphics have to have alternative text or alt text. And what that means is that you briefly describe what the image or the graphic or your logo or something look like. So for example, if I were to describe the logo in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, I would say career force logo. Um, oh no, my screen just popped up over it. I would say career force logo leading Minnesota's or uh, Minnesota's career resource. And that would be the description. You want to have it short, sweet, and to the point. You don't want to have to, you know, describe all of the colors and the swoosh and the dot and all of that stuff. Um, if you have tables, they need to have header rows. That means that they need to be tagged as a header row. If you're doing this in Word, if you go, if you select the table and then go to the table tab, there is an icon on the far right side that you can select that says this table has header rows. And what that will do is that will repeat the header rows on each page so you don't have to keep adding them in. That was a huge time saver for me when I first started creating documents. Please, please, please do not use table for layout. What this means is if you want to have columns on your page and you put them in a table and then you just hide the lines of the table, what that does is it announces to those people who are using screen readers that there is a table in your document and now their, their assistive technology has gone into what's called table mode and now they have to try and figure out how to navigate your document while it's in a table without it being in a table. Um, it has to have good, good color contrast. There are some really great resources, which I can put in the, in the chat for you. Um, uh, that is a free resource and it's a color contrast analyzer. Um, and make sure that color is not only used to relay information. So for example, if you have in there, um, all text in red is required information. Well, a screen reader isn't going to announce that the text is read. It's just going to read the words that are available there. So if you also add an asterisk or something along there that is re like the word required and put that in red, that is a great way to use color to kind of port portray that information for those of us that are visual learners, but also those of us who have to use audiological cues to, to fill our stuff out. Um, there are organized and unorganized lists. So an organized list is a numbered list. So for example, um, baking instructions is an organized list. You have to do things in a certain order. Unorganized would be a grocery list. It doesn't matter if I pick up the bananas before I pick up the milk, as long as I pick up the bananas and the milk. And make sure that your lists are formatted as lists because when um, people use assistive technology, it will announce this is a list and there are this many items in there. Um, and that your links have descriptive text. Please avoid using click here, not only because um, it is, you know, it, it, it excludes people that are keyboard only users, but also click here doesn't tell me where I'm going. And if I click here, am I going to go to a website that's going to be restricted on my computer or is it going to bring me to this job fair that I want to go and, you know, learn about? And so instead of click here, what you could do is um, say, uh, select this link to go to the Force Lake Career Fair. And that whole thing would be a link. Um, so what that does is it tells them what they need to do and it tells them where they're going. Make sure your layout is easy to follow and not super you know, cluttered. Um, formats. Uh, columns are formatted as columns, and please do not use text boxes. And the reason I say this is because a text box for HTML purposes is just like an image. And if you have an image in your document that isn't included in there correctly, it actually isn't part of your document, and then you have to add alt text to a text box, which is a box of text. And so it ends up being just really difficult. Um, next slide, please. Inclusive language, if you heard me talking about, um, you know, the click here, that is inclusive language. That's descriptive text for your links, but it's also inclusive. So avoid click here, click here like we said. 
select this link, or better yet, just link from the copy describing what is at the link. I mean, like I said, I'm lazy. I'm all for copying stuff that I've already done and putting it in my document. Um, instead of walk-in or walk-ins welcome or something along that one, come on in. Come in to get help with an appointment. Come get help without an appointment. Get help without an appointment. Welcome without an appointment. Anything along that line that just kind of avoids the word walk-ins that excludes people who are not walking. See, hear, like, hey, did you see that show last night? Did you hear about the job fair? Did you view the, did you view the flyer for the job fair? Did you read about the job fair? Oh, have you learned about the job fair? These are all things that we kind of need to just kind of adjust a little bit. Men and women, we're people, we're individuals. Uh, minority, the only time we're going to use the term minority is if it is in statutory language. Um, instead, we use Black, Indigenous, or people of color. Um, so, you know, just kind of making these small adjustments, A, makes things more inclusive, but B, it, it really does include those of us um, that may not fall into those generalizations. And sometimes uh, one of the things that I've learned, especially when it comes to accessibility, is that it really does benefit our customers that may not have English as a first language because we use a lot of idioms. So for example, like drop in to get help with an appointment. Well, what does drop in mean? Like, am I literally dropping in through the ceiling? Like, this is so confusing to those who may not know what that idiom is. All right, uh, next slide, please. If you have any questions, please feel free to check, uh, type them in the chat. I do see that Liz did say accessibility, don't use screenshots of posters with lots of details on it in Gov delivery. Put the details in the body of, de of the Gov delivery as text. And that is so true. Um, images that have text are not able to be read by screen readers. The text is not able to be read. It will literally just say that it's an image. And then if you add alt text, it will read the alt text and that's it. So that is a great point. Thank you, Liz. Does anyone have any other questions? And if not, we will move along to, to Lena. Uh, Lena, the Career Force Help Desk and Employment Services Manager. I don't see any other questions in chat, so we will move along to Lena. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. And um, uh, just have a few updates today to share on careerforcemn.com. And um, the first one I just wanted to talk about is that our uh, industry or our training programs uh, have been updated uh, to include industry detail information. So um, training program uh, staff can now add uh, or select and choose from a list of industries to their training programs when they're adding that content to the site. And then when job seekers select the card, they can uh, click on the industry and it will take them to our industry uh, pages, uh, which they'll find some additional information on labor market uh, information, uh, as well as some videos um, and other resources available. So uh, we're also going to be um, in the next uh, What's New with Career Force uh, webinar, we'll be able to highlight some of the updates to our industry and regional pages. So we're really excited about that to um, really enhance the content that is already there and um, just make them a little bit more robust with some labor market information. Um, there are also great places to go and look at details like for some of our current campaigns. For ex example, our information technology industry page has information to the um, information technology uh, campaign for May and then the follow your heart to a caring careers for this summer. You'll see that on the healthcare industry pages as well. Whoops, sorry about this. Okay, next slide here. We're gonna be talking about uh, military careers uh, uh, look up and the updates there. We're really excited about that. Our, our veterans team asked us to in, uh, make our military career lookup available for uh, so employers do not have to log into their accounts. And so we've added that now to the website without login access. And now um, it is on currently on our veterans resource page, the main one. Um, 
we will be working with the veterans team to add it to other pages where needed, um, but it is no longer going to require the employer to log in. It's, it, it's a great resource for an employer uh, when they are uh, uh, filling their job opportunities and they have uh, veterans who are applying for those positions. They can look up the individual's military career, get all of those details, and then really compare it to their job opportunity and um, looking at um, that individual's uh, their skills and abilities in comparison to the position. Uh, Quick Links has, has been updated on all of the account user dashboards. So the next time you log in, if you haven't already noticed, you'll see that the Quick Links has been updated. We're making them a little bit more robust, um, adding current, uh, you know, campaigns, current information, updated information, and then uh, resources that are in demand. Um, so the next time you log in, you'll be able to see those updates as well. Um, and just a reminder that you can always, uh, you can always, um, favorite a page uh, as well and add that on your dashboard if there's something that you go to on a frequent basis. Uh, next, um, just a little update that we uh, have a new URL for the career fair calendar. Uh, we shortened it quite a bit. Um, as you can see here now, it's just uh, slash job fairs. Um, and so we were happy to get that uh, updated. Um, and as you can see, uh, traffic continues to grow on that page. It is a, uh, it's a great uh, way for employers to uh, post their uh, their, their current career fairs that are happening. It's also a place where uh, individuals or network organizers can post their networking events as well. Um, individuals who are using, uh, going to the career for calendar can also add those events to their calendar um, and set up uh, email reminders as well as something, another feature they can forward it to their friends. So if there's something that they think others will like, they can definitely share that with others. Uh, next year, we have a, a new resource that was added uh, under the four employers link at the top of the on the what's new or excuse me on the careerforcemn.com uh, website. It is a uh, it's it's a new resource and it is available for employers to get information, um, tell us about their current openings and events, uh, explore ideas, and then connect for further conversation. Um, we wanna make sure they have the resources that are needed um, to get connected to Career Force staff to really discuss kind of their challenges that they're facing with their recruitment needs. Uh, next uh, couple of slides here, we're, we're going to have some uh, uh, just reminders for a webinar series that are happening for uh, employers as well. Um, Liz usually does these updates, but she had to leave early today because she is hosting the, the Career Force and More for employers. And the Career Force uh, uh, and More for employers is a really wonderful webinar series for new employers um, to Career Force. Uh, as you can see, all of the different topics are listed here, so they get to learn a lot about what Career Force uh, uh, can provide for them and how we can assist them further with their recruitment needs. So, um, and, and if an employer isn't able to attend all of those uh, sessions, they are recorded and are located on the website. So, uh, they if they miss one, no worries, they can uh, they can just get the the link to the recording and get caught up. So, uh, wonderful little short. They're half hour sessions, but they're just a, a great way to really introduce a new employer to who Career Force is and what we can do to help support employers and their needs. Uh, and then uh, finally here, we have the uh, Workforce Wednesday, just a reminder for another excellent webinar series. Uh, the Workforce Wednesday, Wednesdays are the held the first Wednesday of, of every month from 11 to 12. And they also include an extra half an hour for some open dialogue and conversation um, with the uh, presenters that are um, pre presenting that day and have a little bit further discussion. But um, that is a great resource for new and and, you know, long-term employers, right, that have been working with Career Force. Um, lots of different conversations. As you can see here, um, there was the one for May was held yesterday. Uh, you can go to the website, and, and if you missed it, you can um, get the recording link there on, on the website. I believe it will go out today as well in the uh, weekly Career Force email um, as, as well. So another reminder, 
as you're working with employers to share those resources with them and make sure that they take advantage of these excellent webinar series. And with that, um, that is it for me today. I am going to pass it over here to Rita, who is going to talk about uh, an excellent success story. So back to you, Rita. Okay. Um, yeah, so, and you can go to the next slide there. Um, so we had a great career for success story that uh, posted actually early in April. I put the link there in the chat. And so to make a long story short, Shane's success story was he was uh, out of the military, um, had, had basically worked with the military for all of his life until he was 31 um, and was looking for employment last year. And uh, so he went to the 2022 Veterans um, Career Fair, found a job there, and he was back at this year's career fair as a representative of that employer, ABA. So um, you can see his story on the screen. You can also see, um, go to the link there and chat and see his story on, um, on careerforcemen.com. And I uh, just want to mention, too, that if you have um, a career seeker you've worked with um, and you'd like to uh, share their success story, please do encourage them to submit their success story. That link is in the footer of every page on careerforcemen.com. It just says uh, share your success story. You can also share success stories yourself if you would like. So go ahead and, and send them to that link and then we post them on the website. Um, and just wanted to mention that the Star Tribune also saw uh, Shane's success story and they ended up doing a story uh, that posted uh, on Monday of this week. So that was exciting. Um, you can go to the next screen. Um, and just an update on the Veterans Career Fair yesterday, there were about 350 job seekers there, um, nearly 100 employers, um, 10 premier uh, exhibitors, nine service providers. Um, and uh, so it was a, a big success and thank you to everyone who helped work to uh, make that a reality. Uh, the directory of participating employers uh, will remain posted on the Career Force website up until next year's career fair so people can reference employers that were at that event if that would be helpful to them. Um, and you can go on to the next slide. So just a couple of reminders. Um, that we have, we're on the every other month schedule for what's new with Career Force. Our next meeting is on July 6th, and the one after that is September 7th. Uh, we will likely have a, a, a June uh, check in session for staff and partners regarding the Caring Career campaign. So keep an eye out on the Thursday email, the Thursday weekly Career Force update that comes out every week or about noon on Thursdays for uh, information about that Caring career check-in in June and also of course for upcoming what's new with career force meetings and um, if you have any questions or suggestions for uh, webinar topics please do email them to careerforce at state.min.us and please put what's new with career force in the subject line so we know what it's about and you can go on to the next slide there so just want to thank everyone for um, participating on the webinar today. Here's all of our contact info. If you have any questions about uh, information that was presented today, please feel free to reach out or provide your comments. And again, everyone, thank you for participating today.